Inside the Wellness Center here at Thibodeau Regional, welcome to VSN Volleyball. This time, it's the LHSAA Hall of Fame match. Actually, Paul, there were six of them. <laughs> Eric Ritchie alongside Paul Boron, some of the best volleyball teams in the state on display barely a week away from the start of the season. I'll tell you what, Eric, what really impressed me was, yes, none of these matches count towards their records, but you wouldn't know it by some of the play we saw this afternoon and this evening. Really intense play, lots of emotion, and I, I thought these teams put on a great show. Yeah, I agree. It was uh, definitely, these teams were out to win. They played five sets for the first time in the preseason. Yep. We're going to show highlights of all six matches, okay? They had two matches, 3.30, 5.30, and 7.30. They just wrapped up, and of course, we'll also be hearing from uh, Hall of Fame coach Sandy Fusell, who of course is a huge part here at the Sports Medicine Center at Thibodeau Regional and an instrumental part of putting this on. We'll hear from almost every head coach tonight, but Paul, let's start the highlights with the 3.30 match. Danny Davis and North Shore facing Ascension Episcopal got off to a nice start. North Shore won the first set. Here's set two, sophomore Mariah Hammond using that height at the net for the point. Later, it's Tierney Terrell, the senior leader with the kill. Love this play coming up. Emily Martin, she's a freshman setter. Look at the lefty dunk. That's some confidence for the youngster. It's set up Reese Jobert on match point. She gets the kill, and North Shore wins it in straight sets. It was a good win, a uh, good win. The kids played very well. We had a lot of moving parts, and uh, everybody operated like a champ. What on the floor excites you the most? The versatility and the moving parts, and we're still functioning as a team, and the cohesiveness, even though we have pieces moving around, we have uh, we have a lot of depth this year, so we want to give everybody an opportunity because it's going to be all hands on deck when the season starts. So this year's team's young. We're, uh, we graduated quite a few seniors last year, uh, so we have a total different dynamic, kids playing different positions, but they've been working hard all summer. Today wasn't the best test for us. We are uh, battling a couple major injuries of some starters. We're working hard and trying to understand these new positions that we're playing, and they're, they're giving it everything they have. The two-time defending Division III champions, the Hannon Hawks, led by Becky Bonifi, taking on St. Joseph's Academy. C.V. Miller's team, the Division I runners-up a year ago, and it was St. Joseph's Academy taking the first set, and in the second, right side Ellie Foco with the kill, made it 23-22 Red Stickers. Set point St. Joseph Academy's Jenna Tremonti just tips it over the defense and the Red Stickers are up 2-0 winning set two 25-23. But back comes Hannon as they battle back into this match. Sophia Bonifi, the junior outside with the kill and Hannon wins set three and set four, pushing it to a deciding set five. Red Stickers' Jenna Tremonti again, the senior middle with the kill. Hannon would answer with Bonifi spiking one off of the block and out of bounds for the point, evening things at 11 apiece. More Hannon as the senior Carly Bro gets the kill and it's tied at 13. But that's about the time that Foco took over, getting a kill and then another. Back to back, St. Joseph's wins 15-13 to take the best match of the day with a 3-2 win. Oh, we knew. I mean, every every team here tonight is one of the top teams in the state. Great volleyball. Hannon's got a great program. They're very quick, big at the block. Um, I'm just proud of the girls for sticking through. There was a lot of great rallies happening tonight. Um, and you can't ask for anything better than to play a five-set match before the season starts. But it's even better to pull it through. I mean, it, it was a close one. That's awesome. What did you see on the floor tonight and that you've seen this year that, you, that really excites you about this season? I'm excited about my girls. They work through every play. They're not going to stop. They're quick. Defense looked better. Look, looked really quick. Um, I think Alibero Taylor Stockwell did an, a phenomenal job on um, just running the court on defense. Um, our block can improve. That's something we're working on. And um, like I said, offensively, Olivia Judis did a great job running our offense. So I'm really excited about our girls made little things, big things out of little plays. I just thought in the first two sets we made too many of our own mistakes. And when you play a good team like that with the, the, the defense they have, we, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, they're going to get it up. They're going to, so we got to be better. We got to make fewer mistakes. What did it say about your team, though, that battle back to win that third and fourth set and, and we're right there at the yeah. very end in set five? Yeah, these girls, um, 
they want to win, and it's fun to them to, to play hard. It's fun to them to win, so that's what they're going to try and do. They're not going to just give up. Welcome back to this special LHSAA Hall of Fame volleyball game here at the Wellness Center at Thibodeau Regional. Very pleased and honored to be joined by Coach Sandy Fusell, who of course has been working here at Thibodeau Regional in sports medicine in a variety of different uh, capacities. And you have been whole hosting this tournament with so many unbelievable teams for how many years? And tell us about not only how many years, but what it's like to host an event like this, Coach. Yeah, so I think this is our fifth year hosting. We've, um, we've partnered with Assumption High School and Edie White Catholic over the years uh, to host this event. Um, it's just an excellent opportunity for us to bring in just high quality volleyball into our uh, wellness center. Um, it gives the community a chance to see um, some awesome volleyball as you saw tonight. And we're just happy that we can do this year in and year out and um, give a little to the LHSAA Hall of Fame at the same time. We've been very fortunate to see many events you've hosted here. And the exciting part here at the Wellness Center is what's behind us now. Phase two of the Wellness Center, the sports complex. We were lucky enough to see a beach tournament not too long ago, but there are several colleges around the country that would love to have what you had to offer. And that's not just it. Tell me about this sports complex and what all you have to offer. Yeah, so we do have the beach courts available and we thought that our first tournament here was very successful. We hope to build on that in the future um, to sell the beach sport to our community. I think it's um, that's a big uh, plus for us to get the community involved. So we'll, we'll do some little things here and there to try to do that. Uh, we also have 12 um, state-of-the-art tennis courts and um, a full football turf field with uh, NCAA regulation track. So we have all of this to offer. We're really excited about it. Uh, we have numerous soccer uh, teams that are renting our facility uh, due to the weather, uh, but we're just happy to be involved with the community as much as we can. Well, you've done an excellent job, the entire staff here at the Sports Medicine Center with Thibodeau Regional. Again, we've been very lucky and fortunate to see most, most of it firsthand. So, Coach, we just showed the highlights of some epic matches in the 330 round. Let's go ahead and check out the 530 matches. We're going to start with Country Day and Mount Carmel. Cubs came out strong. Juliana Indovina with the block, and Mount Carmel led 15-8 first set. Senior leader Lindsey Wickersham outside this year, delivering the kill. Some great serve received. Nola Savan with the up, the set, and the kill by Michaela Page. Mount Carmel takes the first set 25 to 20. Set two, Country Days, Gigi Dazette. She played well. Cross court kill right here. Sign of a big night for her. Coming in from the right side this time, it's Olivia Prout. Boom time. Mount Carmel responds. Look at the nice quick set to Brooke Dara for the kill. Country Day using a little sister-to-sister -sister action. Maggie to Ellie Schneider, and the Kansas-bound middle puts it away. Into Vena's big night would continue, though. First with the block, then with the kill. Schneider answers. Another kill for her, and Country Day takes set two. Third set now, another great up from Savan. Sophomore to sophomore here, Emma Ritchie to Emily Caracy for the kill. Speaking of Ritchie, this is a picture of her moments after a freak injury with the door as she entered the gym. Cut, swollen, but checked out, cleared the play, and ends a couple of long rallies, first with the sweet dump, then, moments later, a kill to the back corner. Mount Carmel led 14-13. Country Day, real nice touch play here from Schneider. Tips it just over the defense. 19-18 now, Mount Carmel. Another MCA sophomore, Giselle Estrada. Great set from Ellen Brown and a cut shot from Estrada. It's 25-24 Country Day, set point. Schneider there for the block. Country Day takes the third set, 26-24. Fourth set, both teams with some new faces. More sophomore power for MCA. Julia Savoy with the kill. Olivia Meyer, little bump set to Haley Lamont. That's a kill. It's 27-26 Country Day, match point, and Country Day gets the win. 28-26 the final. 
and they take it three sets to one. I think we did a great job today of just fighting through and battling in some points. We played a lot of different lineups in the four sets we played, and I just thought all of our kids did a nice job. And we, we saw a lot of things that we needed to see um, in terms of personnel, but we also, um, you know, they really kind of stepped up to the challenge, so it was nice. It was a great match on both sides. We just got to clean up our side of the ball, all side of the court a little bit, and then I think we'll be fine. Other than that, um, I thought we did well all the way around. Our hitters started putting the ball away in the second and third set, so I'm really proud of them for that. But overall, we just got to get a little bit better. Turlings Catholic was a Division II finalist a year ago. Terry Abear's team looking for similar success this year, taking on Dominican, the back-to-back -back state champions in Division I, led by Jessica Chatelier. Max Preps named Dominican's Ann Hardwin Louisiana's preseason player of the year. And you can see why, as she lives up to that honor with a kill here. Izzy Abear is the coach's daughter, and she makes dad and mom proud with this beautiful touch. Then she follows it up with an ace. Dominican's head coach has a daughter on her team as well. Cam Chatelier recently committed to LSU Beach, and here she comes up with a kill. Then moments later, showing the diversity in her game, taking advantage of the Rebels' overpass for the dunk, Dominican wins the first two sets. Set number three, and Hardwin shows she's in midseason form as she shows the touch with the tip. Then on defense with the block, and she and her team are fired up. Match point, more great Dominican defense, Lauren Pipitone with the awesome up and Grace Landrum with the kill, Dominican in a three set sweep. I think the thing I liked most that I saw from them is we got in a few chaotic situations and they were able to pull together in the middle of the court, talk to each other and bring themselves back into the game. Um, I didn't even have to call a timeout and we had some moments where I probably should have called a timeout, but. I let them kind of work through it and they really did pull together and pull themselves through on the court. So it was good to see that because we have a lot of young ones on the court. So it was nice to see. Dunham is a team to keep an eye on this year. Donna Pixley's team taking on Assumption, the host squad led by Tara Campo. And Assumption starts strong as Abigail Alamon gets the kill. It's 13-7 Assumption. They finish the set strong as they get the cross court kill and they take the first set 25-17. But Dunham bounces back in the second set. Watch number 11 for Dunham, Kaylin Pixley with the block and her teammates are pumped. Dunham takes set number two, 25-18. They keep it rolling in the third set when Nandy Huggins gets the big kill and they win that set 25-20. And then they put it away in the fourth. Raya Davy, the middle, slamming it down. And then it is Pixley again with the kill. Dunham wins the match, three sets to one. This is a phenomenal facility. Sandy Fusell does a great job. Tara Campo did a great job helping her organize it. Um, we've never been invited here before. Okay, so this is our first first go around to be with the big dogs. And I, you know, I think we proved ourselves that we belong here right now. We're, we're senior laden, I have 10 seniors on my team who have played together for a really long time. So it was awesome to be a part of this atmosphere. At least feeling pretty good. You know, that first set, it was like we were running on all cylinders. Everything was clicking. Um, they got some big girls in the front that can jump out the gym. Um, and our server seat kind of broke down. We didn't serve our strongest. And, you know, you got to give them credit. They're a good team. The 7.30 match on court two had Edie White and Sarah Johnson going up against Jody Pulizano and Ben Franklin. Here's Brighton Ratcliffe showing the ups with the kill for E.D. White. Ben Franklin answers with the kill of their own. Sophie Roussel from the outside, E.D. White led 19-15. Exciting sophomore for Ben Franklin is Corey Stays. She's number six and you're gonna see a lot of her. Here's the kill, it's 22-17 E.D. White. Set point now, and it's E.D. White's Katie Phils with the point and the win, 25-17, E.D. White. Set two now, Ben Franklin trying to stay alive here. It's set point for E.D. White, but there stays again. This time, the kill down the line. Ben Franklin hanging alive down 24-19, but later it's Cowley Becknell. She tips it and rolls it, 25-19. E.D. White now up 2-0. Set three, and here comes Ben Franklin. First, it's Annika Robertson. Then it's Aubrey Nearhead, who also had a big game. 
Set point now, let's go back to Stays, who closes it with power. Ben Franklin wins set three, 25-18. Fourth set, and it's Edie White's Brayton Radcliffe putting the Cardinals up 22-17. Then, match point, Radcliffe, boom. 25-21, Edie White takes it three sets to one. I asked the girls just to try to speed up their approaches more tonight, and that worked out. And just whenever I'd call a timeout and I'd tell them to fix something, they came in and fixed it. So that was all, all good things that I saw. This preseason, what have you seen that you've liked out of your team that made a, a run to a state championship a year ago? Uh, just the hustle they have, um, the will to win. You know, they, they're tired of being second place. So um, just their will to win every day, the will to work hard. Um, and just bounce back and not let things just settle. Well, first of all, it's it's just a um, it's an honor just to be invited to this. So it's just a great way to kick off the season. Um, I thought I, I thought we did better the third and fourth game at the net. And you know the whole key is the first line of defense is net play. And I thought in the first and second game they kind of beat us up a little bit at the net. I mean defensively we'll always dig the ball. But, um, you know, you got to be able to hit the ball back. I thought serve receive, we got better in the third and fourth game. I mean, I, I mean, I love my team, you know. Um, we got to learn a lot. We let people go on runs, which I don't know why we let people go on runs, but, you know, they went on like a 13-4 run. I was like, what's up with that? We got to 13 points. Maybe we just like to play in 13. I don't know. I, I think we, we learned a lot. I mean, yeah, we played against a great program, and, you know, it's nice to be a part of this and to allow my kids to play in this. So we're happy. So those two teams, Paul, that we wrap up the highlights with both Ben Franklin and E.D. White. We'll see on the VSN Your View match of the week. Of course, we'll live stream it on VSN. It'll take delay Thursday nights on Your View. But I'm excited, and I know you're doing the play-by-play -play for many of those matches, including week one with St. Joe's and Dutchtown. Yeah, we get it all started on Monday night. It's going to be a great way to start the volleyball season. As you know, if you follow VSN, we have unprecedented vo volleyball coverage and that's going to continue this season. It all starts Monday night with Dutchtown versus St. Joe's. We'll also reveal our VSN Power 10 this year. It'll be our first time checking in with polls. We're going to do one poll, a top 10, and it's going to incorporate all five divisions. We're going to unveil that each week in the Digging It podcast. Podcast now a big part of VSN as well. So we're looking forward to it. But Paul, thank you again so much for your help in this show tonight and look forward to hearing you do your play-by-play -play this year. Looking forward to it. Here we go. So that'll do it. That'll put a wrap to a, another wonderful night of volleyball coverage here on VSN. For Paul Boron, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thanks so much for watching and logging on to varsitysportsnow.com.